Anybody want to go play in the 98? Ladies and gentlemen, to present tonight's colors, please welcome the Salt River Fire Department Color Guard. Ladies and gentlemen, we ask that you please rise and please remove your caps. To perform the Canadian and United States National Anthems, Phoenix Rising FC is pleased to present Patrick Lauder. Oh, Canada, our home and native land, true It's been a long two-month wait for fans in Phoenix, but legendary striker Didier Drogba is finally ready for his USL debut. The most highly anticipated game in league history kicks off in the desert next.
A standing room only crowd expected on a scorching not a hot night in Arizona as the Phoenix Rising FC get ready for Vancouver Whitecaps FC2 in Western Conference action. There's your star of the night, Didier Drogba, after two months of training, is finally match ready, and everybody is on hand tonight. More than 7,000 expected in a stadium that seats 6,200 people. Alongside Matt Stubbington, I'm Brendan Gulick. By the way, Phoenix Rising has a new coach, too, Patrice Carteron. We'll get to him a little bit later. But first, we'll keep our eye on uh, Whitecaps FC2 midfielder Marco Bustos, who's had a great season. Uh, he is had a tremendous season. He's only had three appearances, but he's got three goals in those three appearances and only four shots on target. Really efficient, very busy in the midfield, a real handful for any team that is opposing him. Even though Phoenix Rising has lots of young players and a few veterans who have played well this year, it's Didier Drogba in the middle. What kind of impact can he make in his debut? Well, he is a legend. He's so talented. What is the impact going to be on his teammates? Will they be able to incorporate him in the system, or will they stand by and say, hey, Didier, have the ball, do it by yourself? It's going to be interesting to see how the Phoenix Rising team reacts around Drogba. A look at the starting lineups tonight. First for Vancouver. Keep your eye on Nazim Bartman, the former USF Bull up front. Very speedy, talented player. I'm really happy to see him getting the chance in the professional ranks. Really uh, enjoyed watching him at USF. Kyle Gregg, Marco Bustos, Ben McKendry, and Cole Seiler all on loan from the first team. As far as Phoenix Rising is concerned, Drogba is up front in the middle, but Omar Bravo and Sean Wright Phillips will also command a ton of attention. I'm going with a 4-3-3. It's a really attacking lineup. And of course, you've got Bravo, Wright Phillips. Johnson on the right is also a very dangerous threat down that flank. Amadou Dio was actually just uh, added to the roster of former Clemson Tiger. We'll talk with him soon. In the meantime, let's check down with Jose Bosch to get a better feel for the atmosphere down on the field. Hey guys, I'm here with three very special guests of mine, John, Chris, and Brian, members of La Fiera Roja, one of the originals, I believe the original supporters group, professional soccer here in Phoenix. And guys, it's a very special night, respecting a record-setting crowd. Uh, I mean, considering where the, where professional soccer has been and where it is now, how excited are you about tonight? Uh, I'm really excited. This is, I mean, this is huge. Um, I've been here since for the original days, and this is, there's been nothing like this. So it's huge. John, did it drug starts tonight? Did you ever think you'd hear those words said about a Phoenix professional soccer team? No, we were excited when we had Mackie. Never mind somebody like Didier Drogba. Right. So this is this is just unbelievable for us. So, what kind of magic are you expecting tonight, Brian? I'm expecting a lot of beauty tonight. Um, I mean, especially with Didier on the pitch, I think that's going to just bring a lot of excitement, not just from the crowd, but from the team as well. Um, and hopefully, it, like Phoenix, the Phoenix Rising boys, like show a lot of just passion on the not that they haven't before, but a lot of passion on the pitch, and that he just like drives them to their next level. Okay, we're putting against the break, but I want you guys to give us your best chant right now. Ready? Three, two, keep it clean. Three, two, <laughs> one, go. La Fury Roja. La Fury Jump, we'll jump. La Fury Back to you guys. <laughs> Well, they're clearly having fun and ready for a big night down in the desert. 98 degrees, folks. It's a scorcher. But we are ready for Phoenix Rising and Vancouver Whitecaps FC2 coming up next. together and right now the selection has never been better just look at this three-piece Sonoma Shea sectional only $599 and this urban casual four-piece bedroom just $499 visit Pruitt's for the lowest prices and best selection Alma School and Ray or Thomas Road and 34th Street Pruitt's proudly serving the valley for 65 years Phoenix Rising FC has taken aim. 
With international legends Didier Drogba and Omar Bravo playing side by side, Phoenix Rising is making every match a must-see event. So watch Phoenix Rising FC face Swope Park Rangers Sunday, June 18th at 2 p.m. live on Your View Arizona. Phoenix Rising FC. Every shot heard round the world. I'm all about the fish, all about the rice. I think I'm inspired mostly by the discipline behind sushi, the hand-eye coordination, the knife skills. The knife makes a difference based on the steel and the person who made it, and more importantly, the person who uses it and takes care of it. I think there's a certain amount of elegance and simplicity, and I think sushi is, in its core, simple. Soccer fans worldwide are excited to see Didier Drogba take the pitch tonight for the first time as a member of the Phoenix Rising FC and he hovers over the ball at midfield as we prepare for our opening kick. Wearing the captain armband as he expected to. Wonder what kind of things are going through his head after having not played in a match now in quite some time but he's uh, deemed himself physically ready to go. Well, it's just calming himself down and being ready to play as you know, he's kicked off and it's going to be exciting. It's exciting for the team around him and to see what they can incorporate with his talent up top. Settle in. We've got some fun action for you all night long and we'll see how long it is before Drogba gets involved. In the meantime, right away, Jason Johnson had uh, a touch in a good spot. Of course, Phoenix Rising is in red and White, uh, Whitecaps FC2 will be in the visiting white uniforms this evening. Mentioned it at the top of the broadcast, but if you're just joining us, 98 degrees in Phoenix here at 7.30 at night. It is uh, 7.37 local time as we get this match underway. I know it's a dry heat because it's the desert, but 98 degrees is 98 degrees. It is the kind of night you feel the sweat dripping down your back just by sitting in the bleachers. Hot is hot. Doesn't matter whether you got humidity or not. And these players are going to have to conserve some energy as the game progresses. But Phoenix Rising, they train in this heat, so they're used to it. So that you would say they probably have the advantage from that standpoint as this match progresses. Get a look there at uh, the head coach of Whitecaps FC2. Rich Fagan's done a nice job for them here this year. Tied for eighth place right now in the Western Conference. Four, five, and two coming in. It has been a culture of change, or at least that's what the, uh, the outside has appeared for Phoenix Rising. They are using their third different head coach of the season. Frank Yallop, of course, left the team uh, a short while ago and actually recently made news. He is in line to become the general manager of the... Um, prospective USL team that will be placed in Fresno but he left uh, he left the ball club here down in, in Phoenix Rick Schantz filled in in the interim for a while before Patrice Carteron was able to come in in the meantime a good scoring opportunity thwarted away and the Whitecaps cannot strike quite yet so this is the first game not only for Didier Drogba it shouldn't be so much of a footnote as you get a look at Patrice but he's going to command the attention he respects tonight, too, in his first match coaching at Phoenix. That's always tough coming in in the middle part of the season as a new head coach. But generally, when a new coach comes in, the, the team reacts positively. So be interested to see if that is the case for Phoenix Rising tonight. Johnson lost his footing a little bit, but he's got a lucky bounce. Playing it into the middle and headed away from Drogba Danger. So it sounds like from what the conversations we've had throughout the course of the week with the staff, Rick Schantz, who is now back in his assistant role, has uh, spent several times a day, every day, on the phone with Patrice, talking tactics, talking lots of different things. Here's a great through ball and a beautiful save. Sean Melvin narrowly escapes an early disaster. Lovely give and go up the middle of the pitch there with Sean Wright Phillips getting into the deep into the penalty box. There's the little give and go. 
beats the defender. The goalkeeper read it beautifully well. Stayed tall, stayed on his feet as long as he could. And may able to put that shot from the left foot of Sean Wright Phillips out for the corner kick. Sean Wright Phillips waiting for everyone to get aligned. With the right foot into the middle of the box and headed clear. Beautiful defensive header there. You have to be aware as a defender, Brian, where you are so that you either head the ball back where it came from or keep the ball continuing on its trajectory. All depends on whether you're near the near post or the far post in the goal area. And that was a perfect example of getting it going on the, keep it going on the trajectory out of the danger zone. Phoenix Rising fans are still piling into the stadium. Again, they are expecting potentially the largest crowd ever, and for good reason. Look there at Amadou Dia on a touch. He was just added to the roster in time for this evening's game. The former Clemson Tiger back there defensively for Phoenix. He's very loving life. Take all the pressure off of me. <laughs> I have one of the biggest names in the game start, plus a new head coach taking all the headlines, and I can sneak in at left fullback and just get on and see if I can make a contribution to the team. It's fun to think about it from uh, the perspective of lots of these other young players, especially in the Vancouver side. They are so young as a group. So many of these guys grew up watching Didier Drogba and wanting to play like him. Now they're going to play against him. Play against him, play for him, with him. I mean, it's just a tremendous opportunity. And... You know, one that they can put in the memory banks and reflect on as their careers continue and say, and say that they have played with one of the greats in the modern game. Sean Wright Phillips maybe had an opportunity there, but kind of gave up on it. And Melvin sends it over to the near side. It was well played back into the middle and controlled by Ben McKendry, another first team uh, guy on loan down on the second team. Keeping an eye on Sean Wright Phillips. Normally we see him on the flank. He seems to be more central in the midfield role. Nice through ball. The offside flag does not go up. A beautiful chance, but a big save. Kyle Gray couldn't finish. Boy, Phoenix Rising was begging for an offside call. They didn't get it. And Rich Fagan's team nearly drew first blood. Uh, it's a beautiful through ball. That Kyle Gregg gets on the end of. You see Jordan Stewart there, hand up, thinking there was an offside. Read it at the last moment that it wasn't. Thankfully for him, though, Josh Cohen, the goalkeeper for Phoenix Rising, knew what was going on. Comes out beautifully, recovers his position. And that is an even better save than Sean Melvin made from Sean Wright Phillips not even three minutes ago. I just going to say, we're in the seventh minute, and we've had two on the edge of your seat or on your feet moments here at the Phoenix Rising Soccer Complex. Well, it stayed with it, WFC2 for a moment, though admittedly there was uh, a lack of aggressiveness there in the uh, original touch. Not sure if Kyle Gregg just got caught up or what. Now, he was actually in an offside position, so he couldn't make a play on the ball. That allowed Jordan Stewart to come in and clear the ball with the outside of his left boot. Omar well, Bravo's come onto this near sideline now, number nine for Phoenix Rising. Johnson's gone to the right side. Sean Ray Phillips stays in the middle. Well, and that's the lineup that we expected to see from them uh, when we were given at the outset, but they came out and switched things up on us a little bit. Maybe they're still feeling out positioning on the field and who might be best suited where. In the meantime, this is Nazim Bartman who had the ball knocked away from him, but he was fouled by Drogba. And a couple of key players for Phoenix Rising, Luke Rooney and Alessandro Rigi have both got knee injuries at the moment, so they're out of action for the time being. Luke Rooney in particular was a central midfield player, so that might be why Sean Wright Phillips is drifting more centrally to shore up that area of the pitch. Attempted at a slide tackle there, came out for not from the other veteran from former Chelsea days, hitting in Drogba with teammates back in the early 2000s, middle 2000s. A chance here for Phoenix Rising FC. Nothing comes of it. Bravo, one of the most accomplished players in Mexican history. Well, he's a talented player. He's 
tremendous for this Phoenix Rising team. You can tell him, see he's turning and telling his teammates, settle down. I know I got these fancy pink boots on, but they don't make me that much quicker. <laughs> You can better, uh, you better believe that on top of the fact that the fans are feeling all of the energy uh, around this game, the players are feeling it too. And a nice aggressive save by Sean Melvin as he comes out and grabs it. I think this opening few minutes, especially now that the game is uh, nearly 10 minutes old, I, I think it's fair to say that these two teams need to try and find a rhythm that they can play in. Because if you play in a game 90 minutes long, it's going to be this constant roller coaster ride. Somewhere along the way, you're going to find yourself too far down on that ride. You're exactly right. And you'd think that uh, the Whitecaps FC2 would struggle with the, the heat as far as that ride is concerned. There's certainly a lot of energy imparted onto the pitch right now by both these teams early in the match. Nice right-footed ball sent all the way up the field. Perhaps a chance here. Tyron Campbell. Great footwork. A shot deflected out of bounds. And Whitecaps FC2 has a corner kick coming. Peter Ramage there. Good job defensively holding his ground. Would have been very unfortunate if that deflected onto frame. He goes out for the corner kick to be taken on this near sideline. Just before we cut to this tight shot here of uh, running toward the corner for Bustos, you could see the flags behind the goal you see one there in the top right of your picture the wind is definitely a factor even though it's a warm night you see the corner flag that blowing in the wind bustos had a whole lot behind that because the wind was behind him and the immediate chance was knocked free and at the moment vancouver gives it up good challenge from andy toma but it goes to phoenix a good job there from Bravo to get to the strong side of the field to try and allow his team the outlet pass from the back line. Drogba. Little touch pass over toward the corner. Right Phillips with the right foot across and Melvin is there. Fans stay up to date on the latest USL news and information from around the league. Tune in to USL Coast to Coast with Mike Watts. Mondays at 9 p.m. Eastern on Sirius XM FC Channel uh, 85. Also, don't forget, Sirius XM FC will air the USL Game of the Week. Please check uslsoccer.com for dates and times. That was a delightful ball that Drogba played over the top to Sean Wright Phillips on the right flank. Ensuing cross from Wright Phillips that was just too close to Melvin, the keeper for the Whitecaps FC 2. Breathtaking sunset over the mountains in the background. Tough throw from Dia. And it's just a little too far ahead. And a goal kick coming. Bravo did his best. I like the idea from Dia. Caught the Whitecaps FC2 defenders out of position. Almost sprung his teammate up the left flank. We've talked about all the stars that are playing in this game, Matt, but we haven't talked too much about what the game means. Phoenix is hoping that this injection of Drogba into the lineup can give them some real points. Right now, they're 12th in the Western Conference. They recognize that he's been around quite a long time. There's a lot of mileage on him, but they, they kind of need his offense to get things going with a four and five record through nine games. Uh, it's consistency that the team needs. They've had some great performances, but they've also had some very poor performances. They won one game 4 nothing, and turned around and lost the next game 4 nothing. So they have to have some consistency, and it might not be that Drogba contributes as much on the pitch as the fans might expect or might hope, but what he can contribute in the locker room and on the practice field will allow these younger players to come forth and become a more consistent player and hopefully garner that experience and move on and be successful throughout the season in their careers and he's been training now for two months so it's not as though he's brand new to the team get a tough takedown in the box there a little bit of a hip check no foul called and Phoenix at least for a moment gets away with the uh, potential breakaway from Whitecaps FC 2 
Medea there is a little bit of a weird challenge in the box. I think it would have been a harsh one to go against him. Ball played forward. Drogba found it at his hip. Couldn't touch it. Omar Bravo was there. The takedown. And a foul. A little bit strange, that passage of play. It seemed like Drogba was a little hobbled and slow to react. And then the challenge comes in, and Bravo goes down dramatically, but up quickly, thank goodness, as far as the Phoenix Rising fans are concerned. Didier Drogba. Not sure what more he would need to solidify one of his, uh, to solidify his career as, as one of the greatest players of all time. A multiple time winner in the Premier League. Wins the Champions League. Over 160 goals in his international career, of course, playing for the Ivory Coast. He chips one toward the net, it is just deflected, and the second chance is not rebounded in. Drogba keeps it alive. A third chance, no. Oh my goodness. Well, you would have been odds on that Bravo would have put that volley into the back of the net. It was a delightful free kick. Drogba saw where the goalkeeper was. Melvin was nearer the front post than I think he should have been, perhaps. And Drogba looked like he could chip the goalkeeper, almost managed it. The volley comes in and over, or hits the crossbar, sorry. And you would have thought Bravo would have scored from that far out. Heart-stopping play for Vancouver. But for now, still nothing to show for it on Phoenix's end. And that's where Phoenix Rising have been struggling, is getting the ball into the back of the net. They just haven't done it consistently all season. Just it ahead. And Greg with a foul. We're talking to, but we'll see. And it looks like he may get booked. Yeah, late in the challenge, going into the ankle of number three, Wakasa there. Very heavy challenge. That does not feel good on the foot when you get the cleats scraping down the side of your leg. So Kyle Gregg is issued a yellow card. The USL is one of the most prominent second division professional leagues in the world, featuring some of the game's top talent and rising stars, especially in this game. Stay up to date with all the latest league news and information by visiting uslsoccer.com and follow them on Twitter at USL. Short free kick taken there by Matt Watson. Almost caught the Whitecaps FC two players sleeping. Didn't quite get the service into the box that he needed for it to be completely dangerous. A couple of nice headers kept alive by Matt Watson for a moment. They've had some exciting opportunities, but nobody has put one in goal yet. Nice defense there from... Whitecaps FC2. You can tell Watson's really working hard. You can see the sweat glistening on top of his forehead. And he's really trying to step up to the plate. I mentioned Rooney missing from the central part of the midfield through the knee injury. Watson's really taking it on his shoulders to shore up that area of the play for the Phoenix Rising team. And meanwhile, Sean Melvin has had to be on his toes for all 17 minutes and 27 seconds of this game so far. Little chip shot across the way for the Caps. See if they can mount something here. Looking for Greg, perhaps in the middle. It's Bartman behind the play. Can't collapse quickly enough. Amadou Dia sends it free for Phoenix. And that's going to draw a whistle. Not a good challenge. And yeah, Bravo there just clipping the ankle of the Whitecaps FC2 player. I didn't see who it was. It went down under the challenge, but certainly no need for that. And no just 
rightly deserved yellow card to Mr. Bravo. Omar Bravo has been in the thick of things offensively, but he finds himself here in the book in the 18th minute. Check that 19th minute. By the referee to Phoenix Rising FC member number nine, Omar Bravo. Maybe a lot of frustration there from Bravo, the fact that he missed that great opportunity off of the drug, the free kick. We'll see what kind of opportunity this gives Vancouver now with a set piece from a long way out. I don't see that there's any need for two players in a wall there. Unless there's a player lurking that it wouldn't be a shot that would beat Cohen from that distance, I wouldn't have thought. Certainly not the way that McKendry to strike it. Toward the box, punched high up in the air, a dangerous ball. And as it rolls away, Phoenix can't believe there was no foul called against Vancouver. Some of this nervous energy that has existed early in the games now starting to manifest itself in kind of a chippy way. Hopefully. That can get quashed pretty quickly. Now, there's a good no call from the official. The fact Cohen came out to punch the ball. And there's Whitecaps FC two players in and around just trying to head the ball 50 50. Shouldn't have been a call to foul. Was not by the official. Good decision. Almost 20 minutes into play at Phoenix Rising Soccer Complex. The story of the night, Didier Drogba finally makes his debut in the USL. And it is in front of a record crowd in Phoenix. A chance here for the Whitecaps FC2. Campbell tries to move back to the middle. His pass rolls freely and then is kicked away. We'll read that by the newcomer, Amado Dia, intercepting that pass that was targeting Nazim Bartman on the near sideline. This place is waiting for Drogba to have the ball again in a high scoring area. You can believe he's part of a goal for Phoenix tonight. That this place is going to erupt. Right now the Rising just want to get it out of their end of the field. I'm watching the Phoenix Rising. The front four players rotating positionally. Drogba is playing as the target player and then Wright Phillips and Bravo and Johnson are rotating behind him and there's the free kick. No foul there is number 14 for Whitecaps FC2. Siler was going in on the, the free kick to try and head the ball in the back of the net. Cohen the goalkeeper comes out on the challenge. Kendry touches it toward the middle. David Norman controls for a moment. Bravo's got to calm down a little bit. Riding high on the challenge there. As he was trying to get David Norman Jr. off of the ball. David Norman Jr. only 19 years old. In fact, he just turned 19 a week and a half ago. First professional season. And he's playing alongside, although wearing a different jersey of one of the most legendary players in the history of the game. Phoenix Rising for me, they're, they're lacking a little bit of pace on that right flank. In the, and Wakasa was hobbled a little bit under the challenge about 10 minutes ago. It looked like Matt Watson was struggling a little bit for pace as well. McKendry leads the team 17 shots. He's created 12 chances on the year. A couple of goals this season. This is his ninth start of the year. He was the WFC2 Player of the Year Award winner a couple years ago. Vancouver as an organization awfully high on him. Rising with the ball for the moment as Bravo is taken down. That's another hard tackle against him. I can understand why he's upset there, but Remen's nice straight in with the referee trying to get a yellow card against Chung. He seems to be satisfied with the 
the free kick was given and allow the referee to do his job. So often you see players talk themselves into the book or out of the concentration as far as the game is concerned and get involved in silliness that doesn't allow them to concentrate on what they're supposed to be doing, which is playing the game of soccer. Mr. Chum getting a talking to by the officials. I calm down. The captain getting involved as well. well it's an easy whistle. Drago is bear hugged. <laughs> I'm so excited to be on the same pitch as you. I'm going to give you a hug. <laughs> Nothing remotely legal about that. Now, Drog was coming over for the free kick, and I, this is where I, you wonder whether he's going to take it on himself to take all of the set pieces and things like that, whereas he would be better served, as far as the team's concerned, in my opinion, to be the target in the box. He and Sean Wright Phillips all standing behind the ball. Pace of the game has really slowed down the last few minutes. Drogba plays it toward net and it's headed clear out of bounds. What a corner kick coming. Good play defensively there from Sam DeWitt. Very good defensive header there from DeWitt. Short corner. Drogba held off nicely in another corner kick in a moment or two. Well, soccer fans, Nike is an official sponsor of the USL. For more information, visit NikeSoccer.com. Carl Gregg there shepherding Drogba off of the ball. Right Phillips, a curling corner that gets punched into the air. Still alive. Left-footed shot is kicked high. And Nazim Bartman is there to try to control it. Beautiful footwork by Bartman. Well done defensively by the men in white. Maintaining their position and not, uh, not losing control mentally either. When the stakes grew a little bit tougher. I thought that Bostos' first touch from the pass from Bartman wouldn't allow them to get out of their defensive third, but... They kept their head into change of passes, and now they're attacking their goal. We haven't seen a whole lot from Bustos yet. He was just down on the ground there in that slide. Great ball played forward, but just a little bit too softly. And it's played away by Sam DeWitt. We are still scoreless as the game reaches nearly half an hour old. Alongside Matt Stubbington, I'm Brendan Gulick. One of the most highly anticipated games in American soccer history and certainly in USL history. Didier Drogba has been involved in several plays, but he has not taken a shot yet. I think the Whitecaps FC2 have done a nice job of Playing composed here after a very fast first 10 minutes with a couple of big opportunities for both sides. Phoenix came out with so in it, so so much energy, so excited with the drug uh, debut. No foul there leaves the Caps scratching their head. DeWitt saves his defense by kicking that one forward, or else it would have only been Sean Melvin. And Drogba went to ground. It looks like the official did call for a foul. Mentioned Sean Melvin in goal a couple of times. Just his fourth start of the year. He's 2-1 and one when manning the net. A great cross into the middle. Sean Wright Phillips with a diving header. Too tall. Well, Sam DeWitt was right in front of Sean Wright Phillips. The ball floated on DeWitt and... Right, Phillips would have seen that very late. The diving header was spectacular, but couldn't get it on frame. Boy, that was as impressive as uh, an effort as you could ask for. Spearing himself toward the ball, 
on a perfectly placed cross. There's a beautifully floated ball. Andy Witt just didn't time his jump. As I said, I think Sean Wright Phillips may have seen that ball a little bit late, but a spectacular effort just over the crossbar. Drogba unleashes in a one-hand save. He loved the touch. You could tell his body language. Thought maybe he had one. But Sean Melvin denies him again. Well, he picks up the ball. Sean Wright Phillips knew not enough to get out of his way. Look at the run from Bravo across the defense, taking players with him, opening the shooting opportunity for Drogba. And you could see by the reaction of Drogba, he was a special save from Melvin to keep the Ivory Coast player off of the score sheet. This one headed down, backside, and an unbelievable save. Oh my goodness, talk about right place, right time. And I think that player may be injured. Well, that ball hit him square in the face. Play has to stop. Holy smokes. It was Bravo that took the shot. The header right on the foot of Bravo. Melvin didn't have a chance on it. And it's Bustos that took it off the chin. This is tough to watch. Straight to the face there, Bustos saving the ball from going in the back of the net, whatever it takes. Keep the scores knotted at zero. In fairness, I'm not sure he knew a whole lot about it. I mean, that's as lucky as it gets. He, he just happened to literally be there. But I can't imagine that felt good. Absolutely not. Johnson there athletically getting the ball onto the foot of Bravo, who must be wondering what he has to do to score in this game. You know, great opportunity that he put off the crossbar, and that one he put off the face of Bustos. That is one tough player. Marco Bustos, we featured him in the pregame. One of their best offensive threats on loan from the first team. A young player that Vancouver thinks could have a very bright future. But he just took a hard shot right in the chops. Asking the athletic trainers, do I still look okay? Do I still have your <laughs> teeth? He's made four MLS appearances so far in his career. One start. This is his third professional season. A 21-year-old player from Winnipeg. Nice moment there, Dropper, as Gustos goes over to the sideline to get checked out. Dropper comes over and says, you all right, mate? A little wink from Bustos. Yeah, I'm fine. Vancouver is living on borrowed time right now because Phoenix has peppered the net a couple of times. And as play restarts, it will be Vancouver that has possession here. Bustos is back on the field. Referee waves him on. So good to see him back in action. We will definitely keep our eye on him to see if he keeps his wits about him. Bustos running down in the middle of the field at the moment. That one was stopped momentarily by Cole Seiler. Scoreless game, but not without drama here in the opening 31 and a half minutes. Drogba tried to slip it past Sam DeWitt, but it didn't work. And good positioning from the central back for Whitecaps FC2. Great move, and then a better no-look pass from Kyle Gregg. Looks like Wakasa, the right fullback for Phoenix Rising, is feeling better. His step is a little bit quicker than it was. Vancouver just kind of working slowly, waiting to find some things out here offensively. Looks like we're waiting for a substitute to come in for Phoenix at the next opportunity. Another nice tackle there from the newcomer. Dia, left full back for Phoenix Rising. A nice chance here for Jason Johnson. He's being tracked down nicely by Caden Chung, and Johnson fires it low and wide left. 
There's a little round of applause from Drogba, appreciating his effort. Drogba was lurking in the middle of the box, but look at the positioning of DeWitt and Chung wasn't going to allow the pass from Johnson to find number 11 for Phoenix Rising. So a shot attempted to the near post, but Ramage coming off. Yeah, J.J. Greer, the Memphis, Tennessee native, will take his place as Patrice gives him a uh, tap on the back. It's strange to see the big center back number five going out this early in the match. He's obviously not feeling in top form. I can imagine that would be easy to do, and it's 98 degrees still at this time of night. It didn't seem like he picked up a knock or anything. Didn't see anything in the run of play, so maybe he's just feeling under the weather and thought he could go, but ended up not being able to. So, Greer's a good player, though. He'll be fine in the centre-back position. Nice idea, but poorly executed there from WFC2. Miguel Tim in the back. Looking for Drogba. Rising, keep possession. That was nicely done. Bravo touches it back. Here comes back to Tim. To the near side now in Amadou Dia. Johnson in the corner. And a corner kick coming. Good recognition there from Johnson to buy his team a set piece. I love that. Get down the flanks. Attack the outside backs. The worst thing you're going to do is lose possession in your attacking third. So that's the best place to lose the ball on the pitch. And best thing, obviously, you get a goal-scoring opportunity or you win yourself a corner kick, which is exactly what Johnson did. Set up by the chip ball forwards by the left fullback, Dia. Sent in by Wright Phillips. Loose in the middle of the box. Phoenix still keeps it. Wright Phillips again. Play to the backside. Drogba heads it off the crossbar. He can't buy a break in his debut. Well, the crossbar's been hit twice now by Phoenix Rising, once by Bravo, and now by Drogba. Melvin is living right in net for the Whitecaps FC2. Vancouver, a chance for a quick strike. Way too much on that backward pass. A corner kick coming, but another look at this narrow miss. Rising up highest was Drogba. The goalkeeper was beaten. The wet clearing the lines for the Whitecaps FC2. A lovely headed ball from Drogba. Just couldn't get it under the woodwork. You can see him smiling. It's a sarcastic, I don't know what I've got to do to put one home smile. Meanwhile, can the Caps put one in the net? A great opportunity. Didn't materialize. Cohen holding and hugging that ball. Keep it safe. That was a very good service across. I think Phoenix Rising were a little lucky that the Whitecaps FC2 couldn't put a white header on that and Josh. threaten the Cohen's goal. Josh Cohen played four years of college soccer at UC San Diego. Arguably one of the best in Division II college soccer. This is his eighth season of professional soccer. Lob forward, headed back. Whitecaps FC2 really haven't found anything consistent up this near sideline into the attack. Here comes Sean Melvin. I think that the team shape seems a little stretched at the moment. You don't have control in the midfield area. Actually, I beg your pardon. I don't want to uh, leave that by itself. Josh Cohen playing in his third season with uh, Phoenix Rising. 38th minute of action. There is nothing to show for on the scoreboard. But my goodness, if we had an exciting first half, it's been almost everything we could hope for in a match with this kind of hype. And the only thing missing is a goal. 
Both goalkeepers called into action in the first five minutes, making very spectacular saves off of 1v1 opportunities. And Phoenix Rising have hit the crossbar twice. It's good to see from the more experienced players like Wright Phillips and Drogba, the instruction that's going on from them to the younger players, explaining exactly what they expect and exactly what they want from their teammates. And all of those young guys would do well to be a sponge and soak up as much as they can from some of the greats that have ever done it. Nice idea playing toward the corner. Became a foot race, and unfortunately for the Caps, Andy Toma couldn't get there quickly enough. I like the challenge from Wakasa, just forcing the error from Toma to get the ball out of bounds for a goal kick that Cohen takes. Fans, we hope you'll stay up to date with the latest uh, USL news and information all around the league. You can tune into USL Coast to Coast with Mike Watts Mondays at 9 o'clock Eastern Time on Sirius XMFC Channel 85. Don't forget, Sirius XMFC will also air the USL Game of the Week. Check USLsoccer.com for all the dates and times. Johnson holds off Bartman, plays it to the corner. Dia with a great move to the back post, and Drogba, in his debut, puts in the first goal of the night. It finally goes home. Debutant to debutant, Amadou Dia, the left fullback for Phoenix Rising, crosses the ball into the box. And there he is, Didier Drogba putting the ball in off of the header into the back of the net for his first goal for his new team. Here comes Dia now, faces up Chung, lovely little step over move, a lovely weighted cross. And into the back of the net from Drogper, the goalkeeper Melvin did his best to get his left hand to the ball but couldn't parry it around the post. Silo there just beaten in the air by Drogba, hangs his head knowing that the better player scores the goal. How apropos, Didier Drogba's goal puts Phoenix Rising FC on top, 1-0 late in the first half. Nods of approval from the Banditos behind Josh Cohen's goal there. Satisfied that their man has done their job that they've hoped that he would do tonight. The question is, can Phoenix Rising go on from here and finish the job? Phoenix Rising fans, players, coaches, staff, everybody getting exactly what they hoped. Drogba making a sizable impact here in his debut as that pass is sent out of bounds. Still a lot of game left. There's no reason that Whitecaps FC2 should feel out of this game. In fact, they've had several really good chances. It might just be a matter of time before they're able to put one of their own in the back of the net. Well, that and Phoenix Rising have not kept a clean sheet this season, one of only two teams to have that statistic. They have to be patient in their consistent pressure. Sent toward the middle. This is a good play, and it's just over Bartman's head. Play on as Johnson tries to seal off Bustos. Bustos feeds Bartman. Known for his footwork, Bartman taken down, no whistle. And the Caps are infuriated. Bartman still on the turf. It looked like he lost his footing as he went in to try and cross that ball, and he is in a lot of discomfort looking at his left leg there, his knee. Beautiful footwork from Nazim Bartman on this right flank to get into the box, trying to cross that ball to find a teammate. Thumbs up to the official saying, I'm OK. You're exactly right in commentary. You said he's known for his footwork. That's exactly what he is known for. You're attacking play. You want to beat somebody, you got to change your speed, change your direction. And Bartman did both of those things with a lot of efficiency there to get into the box and create that opportunity. 
was let down by the turf a little bit as he tried to cross the ball. And don't blame him for trying to sell it a little bit. And for Vancouver, it's a frustrating play that never materialized. They feel maybe a penalty kick should have been awarded. Nevertheless, we are less than two minutes away from the end of regulation in the first half. We'll see if any stoppage time is added. Whitecaps FC2 not done threatening yet, though. That was played from Campbell to the far side. Tyrion Campbell gets it back. He measures up the rising defenders. I think Whitecaps FC2 would be best served to try and attack the left flank a little bit more. They seem to have a speed advantage in that area of the pitch. A takedown and a whistle. Bravo garnering a lot of attention there. McKendry and Bustos around him. And fairly bring him to the ground as a judge by the referee. Free kick to the Phoenix Rising. By the way, Nike is an official sponsor of the USL. You can visit NikeSoccer.com for more information. Long ball played forward. Drogba just didn't control it. And it's because he was called for a foul. Put his hand in the back of the defender to get some space for himself to control that ball. David Norman Jr. gets the push in the back. Looks like they will add three minutes of stoppage time here momentarily. <laughs> Drogba trying to say, no, hold on a second. I didn't move the ball. DeWitt asking for some freedom. <laughs> well, DeWitt actually touched the ball forwards, trying to get a few more inches on the free kick, which always makes me laugh because these guys are so strong they can kick the ball so far anyway. Don't blame Drogba at all, but DeWitt wanted the uh, <laughs> he wanted the freedom. It's a little bit of gamesmanship between the two players. Absolutely. It's three minutes of stoppage time in, the, in this first half because uh, Bustos is getting that ball to the face on the goal line from the shot from Bravo was where that stoppage came from. Long ball booted up field and it becomes a throw in for WFC two. So are they making sure it goes out of bounds and Phoenix Rising wouldn't get possession deep in their attacking third. Headed toward the middle. And it's footed down by the Caps. Kaden Chung gets it right back. Looking forward. Onside. Bartman crosses to the middle. Headed and it's too tall. Nice attack down the right flank. Lovely flighted ball in from Bartman. Maybe it could have been a little deeper and closer to the goal. Difficult opportunity from that far out. Kyle Gregg, I think, was the player heading it towards Josh Cohen's net. Just a little bit over. Phoenix rising. So far, so good. But still a lot of soccer left in front of us here this evening. Perhaps one last push here in the first half. Drogba and Wright Phillips trying to jar the ball free. And they win possession. Sean Wright Phillips wanting to cross toward the middle. Instead, he kept it himself for just a moment. Drogba from the top of the 18 tried to curl to the back left post. A little off target, but not by much. Well, the shot from Drogba was a good one, just wide of the upright, but the footwork and tenacity of Sean Wright Phillips was special. Almost got the pass through to Bravo right in front of net. Last-ditch effort defensively from DeWitt. Cleared the ball out to Drogba, who had the shot just wide of target. So far, so good in the debut for the legendary Drogba. Pretty good 45 minutes of work, I'd say. <laughs> <laughs> Hard to figure out a way that it could be any better. Jason Johnson mistouched the ball to the middle, and it cost him the possession. Oh, 
Walker called for the foul. Not much time remaining here in the first half. That one goes out of bounds. And we've got our intermission. Phoenix Rising FC with their debut from Didier Drogba, and they've gotten everything they could hope for out of him. He scores the only goal in the first half, and Phoenix has a 1-0 lead at the break. Well, it's a tremendous opening for Didier Drogba. The debutant Dier passes it to the other debutant Drogba for the opening goal of the match. And Phoenix Rising FC lead the game 1-0 at halftime. Popcorn, couple of drinks. That's fifteen seventy-five. Got this. What? What? What are you doing? Oh, mind tricks. That's cute, buddy. But you still have to pay. With the Arizona Federal Credit Union, I can pay with my Apple Watch. I don't need cash or card. Stop. Arizona Federal provides mobile solutions when you need them most. You will upgrade your popcorn for a dollar more. I will upgrade my popcorn for a dollar more. Really? No. Arizona Federal. Now that's the power of us. The Heineken family passed down a special gift. An original recipe with only three ingredients and all of them natural. I also have a special gift. The ability to cry on demand. It's beautiful. Only three natural ingredients. There's more behind the star. Explore the Southwest lifestyle, the culture, the music, the food, y más. Join hosts J.R. Cardenas and Vanessa Ramirez for a Southwest adventure on Subida. Travel the state, enjoy the food, discover new artists, and fun things to do. Every week, JR and Vanessa share their discoveries with you. Suvita. Watch Suvita on Your View every Sunday and Wednesday on Cox Channel 1007 or at yourview.com. Phoenix Rising Football Club ha mostrado puntería. Con los legendarios Didier Drogba y Omar Bravo compartiendo la cancha, los partidos de Phoenix Rising son eventos que no se pueden perder. Ve a Phoenix Rising Football Club contra Swamp Park Rangers, domingo 18 de junio a las 2 p.m. en vivo en Your View, Arizona. Phoenix Rising Football Club. Cada tiro se escucha alrededor del mundo. A great first half for Phoenix Rising. They lead 1-0 over Vancouver Whitecaps. FC2, thanks to Didier Drogba's goal in the 40th minute. Jose Bosch had a chance to talk with the new head coach, Patrice Carteron. Down to Jose. Well, it sounds like we're having technical difficulties down on the sideline. We apologize for that, hoping that uh, maybe we can get that fixed with Jose. But in the meantime, it's a 1-0 lead for Phoenix Rising FC. Vancouver, uh, a good first half, but not quite enough yet. More halftime coverage coming next. Todd's a great guy. I mean, look at him. What a sweetheart. Atta boy. Wait, Todd, what are you doing? How totally selfish and untod like of you. Come on, Todd. Come on, man. Look at you. You're at the top of your game. At work or at play, you're unstoppable. Nothing can throw you off track. 
Oh, hey. She's cute. Nice going, man. Things are going great for you. You earned a night out. Good drinks, good friends. Yeah, <laughs> we can go ahead and call this a good night. Wait, is that your car? Uh-oh. Not smart. Yeah, I saw that coming. Say goodbye to her. Ouch, that'll hurt your bank account. You're looking at around 10 grand in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. I hope you like eating frozen dinners. Alone. Let's try this again. Smart move. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. Every year, 40% of all food in the U.S. never gets eaten. 40%. That's almost half the food we produce. Food waste is a serious problem. It impacts all of us. And it's expensive. Your family is throwing $1,500 a year in the trash. We're working hard to put food waste on the chopping block. And you can do the same at home. Learn how to cook it, store it, and share it. Just don't waste it. Go to savethefood.com. the stakes. Expectations are high. Our biggest season yet will break records with elite players and future stars. Innovative technology and new homes. We're growing the game in our communities and across the nation. Are you ready? Phoenix Rising 1, Vancouver Whitecaps FC 2, nothing at halftime in the desert. We're going to head down to the field. Earlier this week, Jose Bosch had a chance to talk with our new star. Talking to the, some of the other guys, I think the thing that has struck everyone is, you know, someone as, as decorated as you, you've come in and, and you've really been a part of this team and been kind of one of the guys. For you, for, from your perspective, you know, how important is, is that for you to be viewed as just an, another player on the team that can help this team win games? No, I, I don't want people to, to, to look at me at, like just another player on the team. Uh, I want people to, I want to inspire people. I want to, to, I want them to learn from from my experience, and and at the same time, I want them to feel comfortable uh, playing with me. And I also need to feel comfortable playing with them. You know, I need to enjoy because uh, that's, that's what I've been doing all my life. You know, and, and football is is a game, and uh, where you need to have fun. So when I'm there, I, I'm I'm like a kid every time I I see this ball rolling and. And uh, I want to enjoy with them, and, and I hope we're going to have a lot of great moments. For sure, we're going to have like difficult time, but um, this is this is life actually, and I think football is representing life at its best, you know. 
I know it was important for you to, to make sure you had plenty of weeks to, to be able to train and get ready for being able to play. I need to get rid of this. <laughs> <laughs> how, how important is it uh, that you're able to make the debut in front of the home crowd as opposed to making a debut on the road? No, it's, it's very important. It's very important for me to, to, to do my first game, to have my first game here. You know, I, I still remember the, the crowd here when I, when I first came and, and it was amazing. The feeling was amazing. So I want to see that again and, and uh, I hopefully we're going to have this every time we're going to play here. This is my home. This is, this is our home and, and, and uh, you always want to start at home. I can't imagine it took too long in that 98 degree desert heat to get rid of uh, what he probably described as his belly. But what the heck, it's been a great night and uh, the fans have certainly responded well to Drogba. one nothing, rising leading at the half. I'm all about the fish, all about the rice. I think I'm inspired mostly by the discipline behind sushi, the hand-eye coordination, the knife skills. The knife makes a difference based on the steel and the person who made it, and more importantly, the person who uses it and takes care of it. I think there's a certain amount of elegance and simplicity, and I think sushi is, in its core, simple. This summer, the deals are heating up at Pruitt's. Find all your favorite looks at the hottest prices. Like this Abbey Espresso five-piece counter-height dining set, yours for $199. Or this Slayton Mocha dual reclining sofa, just $499. Visit Pruitt's for the lowest prices and best selection at Alma School and Ray or Thomas Road and 34th Street. Pruitt's, proudly serving the Valley for 65 years. Phoenix Rising FC has taken aim. With international legends Didier Drogba and Omar Bravo playing side by side, Phoenix Rising is making every match a must-see event. So watch Phoenix Rising FC face Swope Park Rangers Sunday, June 18th at 2 p.m. live on Your View Arizona. Phoenix Rising FC, every shot heard round the world. Hey, little man, I'm your new house. Come on in. This is going to be great. Watch what we can do together. Lights. Ta-da! Locks. Not bad, huh? Oh, and this. I've been saving this for you. You take care of the universe, I'll take care of you. Cox Home Life. Home security and automation. Phoenix on top, 1-0, thanks to Didier Drogba's 40th-minute goal. It was the only one that went in the back of the net, but that doesn't mean there weren't a whole bunch of chances before that as we take a look at uh, some of the first-half highlights. Well, they came early and often did the highlights. Lovely give-and-go here between Sean Wright Phillips and Didier Drogba. Great save by Melvin in net for the Whitecaps FC2. Great footwork there to get out and block the shot. But this was another great opportunity, this time at the other end of the pitch. Josh Cohen, an equally fine save off of the foot of Kyle Gregg. Yeah, and those two chances both came in the opening seven minutes of the game. It gave us the impression right off the bat that we were in for some fireworks. Drogba barely missed that one. Bravo couldn't finish from behind the net. The ball stayed alive and still never found the back of the twine, but just barely deflected off the crossbar. It was uh, not the first time Bravo was going to have a tough break here tonight. It wasn't going to be the challenge there off of the free kick. Cohen goes up trying to clear the ball. And Cole Sider trying to challenge as well. This is another great opportunity. Sean Wright Phillips diving header saw the ball late over the top of DeWitt, the center back for Whitecaps FC2, and almost put it on frame. Drop it. Lovely shot there. The run by Bravo taking players away and a fine save to his left by number 40 in net, Sean Melvin. Drogba thought he had one there. Melvin deflects it off the crossbar. And again, this at this point, you just have to wonder if you're Phoenix Rising FC, when is that opportunity going to come? Jason Johnson tried to flip one through. This was just a beautiful play. Fine footwork from 
there on the near sideline to cross it into Drogba, the big man rising tallest in the box. Johnson, great body work there to keep hold of the ball. And then the weight of the cross was perfect, but so was the placement of the header from Drogba. The one highlight we didn't see was Bravo rifling off of Bustos' chin in a right place, right time, dumb luck save. Otherwise, this game could very easily be 2 nothing. but the 10 to three shot margin, pretty apparent. It absolutely is, but I mean, look at the possession as well. Whitecaps FC2 have had a lot of the possession, but it hasn't been in the important part of the pitch, which is in their attacking third. However, Phoenix Rising, they've done their damage in the attacking third, getting the ball up both flanks consistently and getting the opportunities in front of the net. Didier Drogba, the star of the night. He has been so fun to watch, both when he's had the ball at his feet and when he's had it uh, away from his feet. We get a couple looks here of ways that he has just found himself uh, in the mix all night long. Well, he's just had opportunities and really challenged the back line of Whitecaps FC2 and pulled some spectacular stuff out of Melvin. But finally, you can't keep the big man down. I'll find a way to put it in the back of the net. And again, a great look at the headed goal as Melvin was unable to deflect that around the post. And you got to give credit to the young guy, Amadou Dia, number 19, who crossed that ball in for the go-ahead goal. And you feel bad for Cole Seiler, who may find himself on a poster that's uh, sold in the Phoenix Rising gift shop in the near future. So it's 1-0 at the half. Phoenix Rising has gotten basically everything they could have asked for in their debut, uh, not only from Drogba, but uh, from head coach Patrice Carteron. A look now at the Western Conference standings at the beginning of the day. Real Monarchs SLC has had a phenomenal year. What you don't see there is Phoenix Rising. They're in 12th place, but they have only got two points separating them and Vancouver Rio Grande Valley. And they've got games in hand as well. So if they can find a way to keep Whitecaps FC2 off of the score sheet tonight, then Phoenix Rising will find themselves in the top eight, which is what everybody wants to be, is in the top eight when it comes to the close of the season. Of course, San Antonio, the only unbeaten team remaining all across the league. Big matchups coming tomorrow in the Eastern Conference. It's a rematch of the Eastern Conference Finals between New York and Louisville City. We've got St. Louis and Bethlehem coming your way tomorrow as well. FC Cincinnati drew earlier today in a big game against Charlotte. That'll be a big game for Louisville City. They're a good team, very attack-minded. Got some very good players going forwards. Ombi is one of the springs to mind. So, as you said, some big games tomorrow on the slate. Several notable games this weekend. FC Cincinnati and Charleston are coming up next weekend on Saturday. That's a big matchup, especially for Cincinnati, seeing how they can uh, potentially fare up against the top of the standings in the conference. And boy, that San Antonio-Vancouver matchup next weekend will be fun to watch as well. Another look there at uh, the superstar of the night as they get ready for half number two. Maybe a little bubble gum will help him out. <laughs> Give him something to chew on in the second half. You know, it's kind of funny. I was reading earlier today that some of the uh, Whitecaps uh, players are within the locker room. And again, they didn't use any names, so I can't relay that information. But uh, I think there is an internal competition going on with a potential post-match jersey swap with Didier. <laughs> and you start to wonder who might have... Uh, Maybe the veteran right for something like that versus just the guy who happens to be next to Drogba uh, at the end of the match. I mean, they might line up <laughs> and see who can and beat get each it. other up trying to get it. <laughs> It'll be kind of fun. Well, Phoenix Rising has not had a shutout all year. 45 good minutes for Josh Cohen, though he was not tested nearly as often as Sean Melvin was. The USL, one of the most prominent second division professional leagues in the world, featuring some of the game's greatest talents and some rising stars. Stay up to date with all the latest league news and information on USLsoccer.com and follow them on Twitter at USL. Phoenix Rising in red, Vancouver Whitecaps FC in white. Of course, FC2, I should specify. And we are off and rolling in half number two. Brendan Gulick, Matt Stubbington with you from Phoenix Rising Soccer Complex 
in the desert. And it is a hot and humid night. We'll see whether any changes have been made for either team. Clumsy challenge there from Jordan Stewart, hand in the back. Kyle Gregg giving up a great set piece opportunity right at the beginning of the second half, which is not something that Phoenix Rising want to be giving many of to this Whitecaps FC2 team. We only had one substitute in the first half. Rising defender Peter Ramage was taken off in the 34th minute, replaced by J.J. Greer. And it appears, at least for the moment, that the uh, starters remain out there for Vancouver Whitecaps FC2. So a big opportunity here as McKendry stands over the ball. Along with Bustos, Kyle Gregg, and Cole Seiler, McKendry rounding out the group. Those four are all on uh, the second team on loan from the first team. That boots clash with each other, neon red and neon <laughs> green. It's got to be bad if I notice it. McKendry deflects it off the wall, high into the air. It's bobbled by Cohen, kept in play. Don't see that very often. A high pass to the backside. Popped up in the air. McKendry. Back to Bustos. He fires a low shot deflected. And now numbers for Johnson. He is so dangerous with that open field speed. Beats a defender. Jason Johnson with a rocket at the net. Sean Melvin got in the way of the ball more than saving it. And Phoenix Rising denied an early second half goal. Positioning from the goalkeeper was perfect. Johnson had to go for the shot. He had nobody with him. Bravo was coming, but very, very late. Beautiful counter attack on his own from number 14. The insertion of Didier Drogba into the front line for this Phoenix Rising team makes an already talented front line that much more dangerous. And it puts some pressure on their defense because they're going to be able to score some goals. It's just a matter of can they stop anybody. I think a four and five start isn't what they wanted, but the future looks bright for the remainder of the year. It definitely does. And as you say, Drogba being out there, he's going to garner so much attention. It's going to open up things for Bravo and for Johnson in the front line. Those back four players have really got to tighten things up, make sure they don't give up his opportunities and make sure they don't isolate goalkeeper Cohen in back of the net and leave him on an island. Phoenix rising three on four. A through ball for Johnson. Melvin comes out and makes a sliding save. Sean Melvin living on borrowed time. Well, Sean Wright Phillips had to delay his pass, trying to get the back line to commit. DeWitt did commit. Ball waited perfectly for Jason Johnson. Maybe a little bit more composure from number 14 for Phoenix Rising. He could have dribbled past the onrushing Melvin, but credit the goalkeeper for another fine save. You're right. You do need to give him some credit because Sean Melvin has been tested all night long from the opening couple of minutes and with the exception of just once he's answered the call he has to hope that given that Cohen and his team have not had a shutout all year he likes his chances of his offense putting one in the net at some point well, if he can just keep doing his job and keep this score line at one nothing the Whitecaps FC2 have to believe that they are in this match and have a chance because of the fact that Phoenix Rising can be so porous in the back line. Didier Drogba, hands on knees, maybe struggling a little bit with his fitness. Some nights are not particularly, uh, not particularly challenging in net. Others like this, what you really make your money on. Bravo. Looks toward the middle, it's still free. Drogba. Foots it ahead. Wakasa centers it. Matt Watson has it played down. 
and a foul. It's on Watson. Wry smile from Watson knows that it was not a good foul that he had at the halfway line there. Drogba really seems to be struggling. He's down on his haunches now at the top of the center circle and Phoenix Rising's attacking half. I think this could be a really big half for Jason Johnson. Well, he's a talented player. He's also demonstrated how athletic he is and how fast he is. And that's a huge challenge there. Yeah, it came in awfully hard and a booking coming. Right. Amadou Dia was the victim. David Norman, the culprit. Norman is trying to get away, but the referee's having none of it. Crowd wants the game to continue. Here we're saying give the card already. You could tell in the explanation if you were lip reading along with him, the referee said, I have to. So he must have seen something maybe at the tail end of that hard tackle that was egregious enough that he offers the yellow card. Another look at the foul. Well, it's kind of a 50 50 ball. He didn't he left his feet, but I think it's the acknowledgement of, hey, I know I did something wrong there, and the sportsmanship of going over to see if Dio was okay. But sorry doesn't fix it. You still got a foul there, and it was a yellow card to Norman Jr., and that's a well earned card. It's the third caution of the game, issued in total, second to Whitecaps FC2. Wright Phillips touches ahead, and unfortunately, Rising was off sides. But Phoenix maintains possession. Two veteran players, Wright Phillips and Drogba, were not happy with Johnson there. They thought that he should have been able to get on the end of that. Johnson tried to touch back to Drogba. That was pretty well defended by David Norman. Norman with a nice pass toward Campbell. Wright Phillips pulls it away. Right, Phillips is such a busy player, so tenacious. We saw it in the first half on the right flank, creating an opportunity deep in the attacking third, just purely because he had the, the want to to win the ball and beat players on the dribble. Whitecaps FC2 is far out possessing Phoenix Rising FC at this point. They've controlled almost 63% of the possession here so far in this game. And so to your point, Matt, they should very much feel like they're in this game. Even though the shot total is heavily favored on the other side, many of those came early. That possession statistic is such a misnomer. A chance here for Bravo. Beautiful defense, the ball slips through. Oh my gosh, Cole Seiler saved the day. Bravo can't buy a goal. He's had so many opportunities this season, but no luck to speak of. A great defensive effort from Cole Seiler to block the shot that Bravo was trying to make. Drogba, too much on it. That almost went out for a throw in. That was such a bad shot from Drogba. Tired effort there from the big man. Lovely ball in, lovely change of direction from Bravo, but equal to it with Siler to get back defensively. Phoenix rising with the only goal from Didier Drogba in the 40th minute. Another golden chance. It's past the keeper. If only for a moment. Into the middle and Johnson's header was deflected by Caden Chung. The defense for Whitecaps FC2 has been unbelievable tonight. Credit Melvin for the save. It won't go on his statistics because he never touched the ball, but he did enough to force Bravo wide, allowing the goalkeeper and the defense to get back. And Johnson should have had a corner kick. It deflected off of Chung. It was a difficult opportunity coming back to meet the ball from the cross from Bravo. But Malvin is playing a tremendous game all night long. And 
as I said, he's not going to get the statistical credit for the save there, but it was his positioning that forced Bravo wide. Nifty little back-footed pass. A change of field now. McKendry plays forward. Toma up front, cross toward the middle. Bartman came from the backside and couldn't get it. And the foul is called against WFC2. Rock were a little upset with the referee. He felt that they had the Phoenix Rising had the advantage going forwards there off of the clearance. And the coaching staff feel the same as well. But going back to that statistic, statistic about the possession, it's Phoenix Rising that are having the possession. If you look at the statistic as far as where they're having the possession, Phoenix Rising would probably be in favor of 60 to 40% as far as the attacking third is concerned. You're right. It can certainly be a misleading statistic. Vancouver's had some chances, but they have certainly not been the same quality or quantity of chances that we've seen from the home men in red. Absolutely not. It's Phoenix Rising that are creating the best chances. Drogba heads it forward. Sean Wright Phillips lost it at his feet, recovers and shoots too low. Nice save by Melvin. Melvin had to be sure of getting his hands behind that ball. Shot was right between the goalkeeper's legs. Melvin makes any mistake, he would have been on a highlight reel of not top 10 moments in the sport, I think. Sean Wright Phillips is no spring chicken either. 35 years young. He has a tremendous amount of international playing experience. We've featured Drogba all night and talked about Bravo quite a bit, but Wright Phillips deserving of lots of praise. Meanwhile, Toma had it knocked free. Drogba couldn't quite slip it past. He was so dead set on beating DeWitt. Might have been the heat of the night there, taking the energy out of Drogba. Didn't quite have the step that he thought he had on DeWitt. The eyes were getting big for Drogba as he thought he was going to be on frame. Pretty impressed with Tim and Watson in the center of the park for Phoenix Rising. They've done a pretty good job, the pair of them, of shoring up the midfield area of the pitch for Phoenix Rising. Well, especially when Sean Wright Phillips has pushed himself up further in the formation. You're right, Tim and Watson, we haven't said their names nearly enough, but they have been all over the place tonight. And Drogba chested it down too far in front of him, and then he points back to the defense to say, eh, it's not really where I wanted it. <laughs> you know, one thing that Drogba is going to have to be careful of is his body language a little bit. He needs to instruct the players around him, but try and do it with some more positive body language. Hanging the head and remonstrating in a negative way will affect the confidence of his players around him. Bustos was fouled in the middle of the field. And from maybe seven or eight yards outside the 18, Rising will form a wall to try and stuff this opportunity. Stay up to date on the latest USL news and information from around the league. Tune in at USL Coast to Coast with Mike Watts, Mondays at 9 p.m. Eastern on Sirius XM FC Channel 85. Don't forget, they will also air the USL Game of the Week. Check uslsoccer.com for all the dates and times. Whitecaps FC2 have had few and far between scoring chances here in the second half. McKendry on the free kick along with Bustos. It's Bustos to strike it, and on the deflection it goes out of bounds, and a corner kick. Great location for a free kick there. It lent itself to either, either foot right or left footed. It was Bustos that took it second time that the Whitecaps FC2 players have had a free kick in a dangerous position, but haven't been able to clear the wall with the initial service. Looking for an equalizer. Johnson heads it free. Norman back to Bustos. 
He re-centers it on a deflection right in front of the net. And it's headed over the top of the crossbar. Another corner. Jordan Stewart there heading it over the crossbar. I'm not sure that's exactly what he intended to do, but the big center back for Phoenix Rising make sure that the ball is out of the danger area. Pretty much all he could do with it. He didn't have the purchase on the ball to head it out of the defensive third for Phoenix Rising. Trying to guard against the short corner. Laced into the middle. Bustos on the back side. Rips a shot. It's punched away. Josh Cohen receives a round of applause for his solid effort in goal. Hasn't been called to do a whole lot this half, but the important thing is when he is asked a, a question, he's answered it for Phoenix Rising so far. It looked very awkward the way he made that save, punching it clear, but somehow, some way, he got it out of his defensive box. The Banditos are having fun. Didier Drogba in his debut with a goal in the 40th minute. Now more than an hour into our contest, and it's the only one that's gone into the net for either team. Vancouver mounting some momentum, though, especially over the last 10 minutes or so. Rising almost feel like they're just kind of hanging on, and it's, it's maybe apropos to see Didier Drogba, maybe with the fitness level, not quite at 100% yet. You can see as he starts to flail out a bit, Vancouver has picked up some momentum. At the moment, I think Phoenix Rising are playing with 10 and a half. Didier Brog Drogba doesn't have. It's one thing, you've got to get yourself match fit, but match fit at this temperature is a completely different a kettle of fish as well. Norman plays it in. Bustos denied in the box. Cohen comes out to pick it up. No whistle. Well, Greo came in in the first half because Peter Ramage had to leave the pitch through illness or injury. Did a fantastic job here to track the run and then the last ditch tackle there from Greer did a, was absolutely brilliant to take the football off the foot of Bustos. All of a sudden it feels like Vancouver is constantly possessing the ball, at least continuously. And rising fans are left to sit there and just Look up at the scoreboard and wonder, okay, how long can we hang on to this? Possession still heavily favors the Canadian team. It's key for Bravo to be very involved and get to the strong side of the pitch. He needs to be very active. Pick up the slack from Drogba. Drogba in a great chance. And his touch is just off the mark. He didn't like it. So much for the gum he started with at halftime. Uh, left a bit of taste in his mouth did that effort. Looked odds on to put that one in the back of the net. Just wrapped his foot too far over the ball and dragged his effort wide of Melvin's goal. Can Vancouver counter? Norman with a big left foot. And it's off target looking for Bartman. Phoenix rising, they seem to be sitting deeper and deeper. They're not getting up the pitch in numbers as they were earlier, earlier in the game. That's allowing Whitecaps, Whitecaps FC2 to possess the ball further up the pitch and become more dangerous on the attack. Stewart with a poor pass. Turns it over near midfield. <laughs> and the head official got in the way as Phoenix tried to step in front. Whitecaps FC2. 
Good pass toward the middle and a great leaping grab by Josh Cohen. Good job from Cohen to corral that ball. And here the crowd, a little bit anxious. Whitecaps FC2 were able to switch the point of attack from left to right. Spring Chung on that far sideline. And a foul gives the rising a chance to set up. Silly foul there from McKendry. Gives Phoenix Rising the chance to get a little, catch their breath a little bit, communicate with the coaching staff and everybody get on the same page, get further up the pitch. You hang back and it gives the other team a lot more room to work in. You can't do that. You can't afford to do that. Maybe a chance now for Vancouver. Bustos, good pass for Bartman, and he's taken down in the box. A penalty kick coming. Okasa saying no way there was a foul there, but I'm sorry, that definitely was a foul there. I'm sure where the contact made in play, it just it definitely looked like it was inside the box. Cass has been struggling to stay on terms with these players for Whitecaps FC2 going down the flanks. And we said in the first half, Bartman is a very speedy player and shows how fleet of foot he was there getting goal side of Okasa. Lovely ball played vertically up the pitch. And it looks like the contact happened just outside of the box. Definitely a foul. Definitely a card-worthy foul as well. And the referee has pointed to the spot. Marco Bustos, I think, is going to take it. He's already scored one from the spot this season. Bustos looking for his fourth goal of the year, and this one would tie the game. Vancouver with their biggest chance of the night. Bustos ties the game at one. Took a long time after the whistle went for the kick to be taken for Bustos to settle himself and approach the ball, but when he did, he did it with a plumb with his left foot, putting it past Cohen, who went the, in the correct direction to the keeper's right. That was a very well-taken penalty kick. Clap of the hands from the goalkeeper in frustration, but I think he well-guessed effort from Cohen, but that was a well-taken PK. Marco Bustos steps up for Vancouver. And the two players we featured before the game started is guys that really needed to make an impact for their team tonight. Both have put one in that. We've got a brand new game here, one apiece. As it starts to inch closer toward the end of the second half. On the last game I did here from Phoenix. Phoenix conceded a penalty kick very late against o Oklahoma Energy. Looks like referee stopping play for the injury. And Nazim Bartman is still down after he tripped over the back of one of the rising players' legs. He went down hard, and he has been in great agony holding that right shoulder ever since he went to the ground. Another look at this, and you might want to hold your breath. He landed very awkwardly on that shoulder. Nazim Bartman, we mentioned earlier in the broadcast that he played his college soccer at the University of South Florida, where he was one of the top players in the American Athletic Conference. Makes his second pro start today, the first of which came back in the middle of May. He's been a substitute in every match. 
fourth round pick in the 2017 MLS Super Draft as he hops to his feet. From Cape Town, South Africa. No he's, sympathy for the fans. <laughs> as he no, walks none whatsoever. Sideline. I'll tell you what, though, watching his footwork, whether it's with this organization or another, he has a very bright future. Yeah, he has an absolute talent. Quick feet on the ball, as you say, very technically gifted. Bartman will come back on as he discusses things with the side official. And Drogba, the competitor that he is, giving his say. Possession given back. To Whitecaps FC2 by Mr. Drogba. And they wave Bartman back on. Get back on with the game. Alongside Matt Stubbington, I'm Brendan Gulick. The highly anticipated and long awaited debut of Didier Drogba has lived up to the billing and then some. He scored in the 40th minute. Vancouver Whitecaps FC2 just scored a few minutes ago. On a penalty kick, when Bartman was taken down in the box, Bustos took the kick and scored in the left side of the net, just beating Josh Cohen, who guessed the right side but couldn't quite get far enough to reach the ball. It's been an evenly matched game in a lot of ways, and so finally now reflected on the scoreboard, but would certainly like to see a winner here as opposed to both teams earning one point in Western Conference play. Got some substitutes that are shortly coming. Appears that maybe Omar Bravo will see his night come to an end before the final whistle. Meanwhile, Vancouver still possesses. It'll be David Norman that leaves the pitch for Whitecaps FC2. Substitution for Phoenix Rising FC. Well, Seymour coming in in his stead. Entering the match is number 24, AJ Gray. Bravo gets a big round of applause. As I said, a little surprise that Bravo's coming out of the game. I thought he's been playing pretty well. I would have thought it would have been Drogba that was coming out with the struggle that he's had Substitution for Vancouver Whitecaps FC in the second half. Entering the match is number 58, Will Seymour. So Will Seymour will head in and play in the midfield. David Norman Jr. David Norman Jr. exits. Good effort from him so far this evening. He did a pretty good job in the center part of the park. Bartman almost found himself with the ball at his feet and not much in front of him. Right Phillips, right foots it over to the side. A.J. Gray wearing number 24. He was the one that just came on for Phoenix Rising FC. Johnson up the far side. We've seen how explosive he is. He gives it away for a moment. Still a chance. Seymour sliding over to help. Does not touch the ball and it crosses out for a goal kick. Boy, Seymour really strong there in his opening 60 seconds on the field. And the Boo Birds are out in Phoenix. The Boo Bird Banditos didn't like that at all from behind the goal, but <laughs> Melvin is in. Well, that was a, just a tremendous physical battle between Seymour and Beer going into the attacking third there. I thought Johnson had an opportunity to cross the ball in to the six yard box, but he chose to play it back to Dia, who then tried to get deep into the attacking third, but wasn't quite able to find the purchase on the ball he needed to threaten the goal. Bustos unloads, it's a little too tall. What about threatening the goal? Bustos got the purchase he needed to threaten Cohen's goal there. 
from about 25 yards out. All looked a little bit innocuous when Bustos picked up the pass there, just turned the backs of Greer and Stewart just backed off him enough and Bustos said, hey, if you're going to give me that space, I'll have a crack on frame. Thank you very much. Drogba heads it, looking for Wright Phillips. Just less than 15 minutes remaining in regulation play. Didier Drogba with a 40th minute goal. The equalizer on a penalty kick in the 68th minute for Marco Bustos. It's going to be interesting now to see what the coaching staff do for Phoenix Rising as Drogba picks up the ball. He dishes off to Wright Phillips. With a great shot, Wright Phillips scores as he shoots through Siler's legs. Phoenix rising back on top. Well, the last game I did here from Phoenix, Phoenix rising one. 2-1, they had conceded a goal on a penalty kick and then it was Sean Wright Phillips who scored the game winner on that occasion. He waited till the 93rd minute to do so as he scored the game winner now in the 77th minute. But it was almost a copycat goal from the same position through the defender's leg, Siler beating the goalkeeper Melvin who was probably seeing that ball late. But the two goals he scored, Sean Wright Phillips this season at his home ground have almost been exactly the same. From the same part of the penalty area and the celebrations the same as well. At the moment, Didier Drogba's debut, Patrice Carteron's debut as the coach. Well, so far, so good. But it's up for uh, up to Phoenix Rising's defense here over the last 12 and a half minutes plus stoppage time to try and preserve the storyline everyone hoped for. Now he has a goal and an assist on his debut. Didier Drogba, he's done a pretty good night's work. Question that I was going to ask before the ball went in the back of the net is with one substitute left, does head coach Patrice Catron bring off Didier Drogba and make a change? Meanwhile, Nazim Bartman has left the pitch. Thomas Gardner has taken his place. That happened while we were showing you the replay after the goal. So Bartman's day is over. Drugba. Trying to hold off Seymour. Jason Johnson, so quick on that second touch. And his pass toward the middle is sent wayward. Sense of urgency now for Vancouver. They are hoping to avoid losing their sixth game in 12 matches. Meanwhile, Phoenix Rising trying to get back to 500 at five and five. Continue to be impressed with Jason Johnson, number 14 for Phoenix Rising. He's done a good shift of work tonight. Been dangerous down both flanks. Perhaps with a little bit more composure in the attacking third, he's get more scoring opportunities for himself. Plus, if Phoenix picks up a win tonight, those three points, based on the standings at the beginning of the day, would vault them into the top eight in the Western Conference. And of course, those are the eight playoff spots in the Western Conference. Something stirring here and nothing really materialized. A.J. Gray, not a bad idea. Good recovery by Andy Toma. Get back goal side. So Gray had the opportunity to cross the ball back in to the penalty area, try and find Drogba, Sean Ray Phillips, Johnson. But a good recovery by Andy Toma. Less than 10 minutes left in regulation. 
Whitecaps FC2 have played pretty well. But the second half, conceding that goal to Sean Wright Phillips, will it prove to be the game winner? Good effort there from Gray. Guarantee the Phoenix Rising will take their sweet merry time over every throw in that they possibly can. Drogba chests it toward the middle and loses possession. Frustration there from Drogba. Beautiful skill to turn on the chested control. And Silas' positioning was also very nicely done there by the center back for the Whitecaps FC2 and Drogba just nips at his ankles and gives away the silly free kick. Siler's had an up and down game. Unfortunately, he's been the victim on both goals, but he's also had several really impressive good plays as a foul is called against the Caps. Yeah, one very good tackle in the box to take the ball off the foot of Bravo. As Bravo was shaping for a shot. And you say it was Siler that was beaten on the header that Drogba scored on and it was Siler's legs that the ball went through that Sean Wright Phillips also scored on. We're going to take a look at all three of the goals that have been scored here as we have an injury on the far side that's attended to. Phoenix scored first. It took a while, but finally Drogba was able to put one in the back of the net with his head. Oh, beautiful timing on the jump. And then there was the penalty kick scored by Bustos. And then a beautiful way to pass from Drogba to find his teammate, Sean Wright Phillips, who just thumps the ball through the legs of Siler into the back of the net. Melvin unsighted by his defender. At first, uh, at first glance, I thought it went cleanly through Siler's legs. And I think that replay shows he may have deflected it and slightly redirected the path of the ball. Certainly nothing he could do about that. Drogba is basically a, a superhero. If, uh, if you will, one of the legendary players of all time in his USL debut. Hey, speaking of superheroes, tough day for uh, many superhero fans across the United States. Adam West at 88 years old, the original Batman, passed away here this afternoon. Well, sad to see that. He had a good innings, but... Grew up watching him, Batman and Robin. Remember running around the school playground with Parker on the head, singing the theme tune. Adam West was one of the best. He will be greatly missed. Wow, they just announced the attendance inside the stadium. 7,062 in a stadium that seats 6,200. Jam-packed for Didier Drogba's debut. He's got a goal and an assist. And there will be lots of stoppage time, I imagine, added at the back half. But we are very late in regulation. That was Jason Johnson that was down for the injury. It looks like he's back on the pitch. Foul called against Whitecaps FC2. Opportunity for Phoenix Rising to take even more time off the clock if they can. In no hurry whatsoever. Buries it toward the corner. Cross to the middle. AJ Gray with a left foot, just a little too tall. He did very well to get that shot off, did AJ Gray. Ball played back across the box by Amadou Dia was just a little bit too far behind Gray to put the one-time effort on frame. Had to take a touch, falling backwards, and was able to put a dangerous effort that Melvin had to make sure was going over the crossbar. I think we may be waiting for a substitution as Glory Amanda, an 18-year-old, Waits to check in. Well, we know who's coming in, but nobody seems to know who's coming off. Gloria Amanda 
One of the young players for Whitecaps FC2. He will replace Kyle Gregg momentarily here, but Amanda, one of those players who idolized Drogba, followed him very closely when he was playing overseas at Chelsea. Substitution for Vancouver Whitecaps FC2. Amanda said even uh, as a young striker himself, he studied all the qualities that Drogba had and tried to figure out how he could incorporate some of what he did into his own game. And really noted both his strength and his power as two of the uh, most impressive things about the way the Hall of Fame type player has uh, built himself an incredible career. Meanwhile, Whitecaps FC2 down a goal, needs something quickly. I think that even though it became a shot, probably was supposed to be more of a cross to the middle of the box, and no one really picked it up other than Cohen. Cohen looked very relieved that that ended up in the, his hands and not in the back of the net. Everybody was surprised by that. Mukasa, the outside back on this right side for Phoenix Rising, continues to struggle with the pace of Andy Toma. Referee heard something that he didn't like there. Yeah, he went into a full sprint. You're darn right. Jordan Stewart getting a stern talking to. That was a major warning issued. Three minutes left in regulation as Drogba tries to help line up his defense and secure a win. Very important for Phoenix Rising to keep their concentration. The left foot softly to the top of the box. Sean Wright Phillips plays it out. AJ Gray up the sideline, beautiful play. Wright Phillips manages to keep it in. He still possesses. To the middle, Drogba. That one looked more like window dressing. Not a lot behind it. Maybe a little touch of fatigue there from the big man. But the footwork of Sean Wright Phillips and the, again the tenacity of the man to tiptoe down the sideline, keep the ball in play and create the opportunity on the counterattack. Very, very impressive. He is 39 years old. <laughs> he has been at this an awfully long time. And I think he'll even tell you Probably doesn't have quite the same uh, level in the tank that he used to, but he is still playing at a high level. Well defended and cleared free. Whitecaps FC2 with their back against the wall. Their only goal came on a penalty kick as Phoenix Rising looks for three major points at home. Gordon Stewart, that little body check, making sure that Gloria Amanda couldn't put any pressure on Cohen as the goalkeeper for Phoenix Rising clears the ball. Toma plays it back. McKendry. Less than a minute in regulation. We expect several minutes to be added in stoppage time, though. It's go time right now for Whitecaps FC2. Looking like four minutes of stoppage time to be added on. Referee blows his whistle for something that he saw in the box. Player down. Another arm stinger. I've seen three of those. Bartram for Whitecaps, Whitecaps FC2 was subbed out after he had gone down under a heavy challenge and stung his arm. And Jason Johnson also, although he was able to return to the action. Looks like Jordan Stewart and the referee are best of buddies now after that stern talking to not two or three minutes ago. 
how quickly things can change. Fans, we hope you'll stay up to date all season long on the latest news around the USL. You can tune in to Coast to Coast, the uh, USL Coast to Coast with Mike Watts, Mondays at 9 p.m. Eastern on Sirius XM FC Channel 85. They will also air the USL Game of the Week, which you can check for dates and times on uslsoccer.com. Checking out that left shoulder, and he appears to be okay. Good news for Miguel Tim, who has played every minute of this game so far. And the incredibly sweat-soaked jersey would uh, indicate that he's played hard. 98 degrees when we got underway. It hasn't cooled off much. It's still hot out there. See all the players grabbing the water bottles from the athletic trainer's bag, trying to get as hydrated as they possibly can. Well, Didier Drogba and company are going to enjoy an eight-day layoff before having to take the road when they go to Swope Park on uh, Sunday next week before returning home to play Real Monarchs SLC in what will be one of the feature games of that weekend. Two weeks from tonight, the top-ranked team in the Western Conference who has only lost once. They are 10-1. and one. Can the rising add to it? Gray doesn't need a goal. And a takedown. Very wily play there by... Phoenix Rising win the free kick right on the edge of the box. McKendry, tired effort defensively. Drogba and Gray both hovering over the ball. Didier Drogba, can he add to his incredible debut? And Drogba, unfortunately, couldn't maintain possession, but a corner kick coming. Well, this is all about possession right now. Drogba getting the banditos going. Just got to maintain their concentration to the Phoenix Rising team just for a few more minutes. They're going to rush about taking this corner kick either. This one will probably stay right where it's at, right on the corner. Red Phillips puts it in. Drogba taken down, maintained possession. This is all about killing the clock. AJ Gray is fouled hard. Kendry again going in for the challenge. Referee saying no more of that. Right now, it's just the time of the Whitecaps FC2 team that is being wasted. A throw in for Vancouver. Maybe one last chance here. Well defended. Important challenge there by Greer. It looked like the Whitecaps FC2 team had their head of steam going towards the goal of Cohen. Johnson and Watson couldn't kill the time. A takedown. One last chance. Bustos, who scored on the PK. Back to DeWitt. Seiler, no, out in front. 
It's into the middle in an incredibly dangerous spot and Phoenix Rising dodges a major blow. Danger's still not cleared. Corner kick on the far sideline. Everybody's up now. It was struck into the side of the net. And there's the whistle. The ending that the Rising hoped for. Didier Drogba with a goal and an assist. And he finishes by putting his team in the win column in his debut. The at every Phoenix Rising home match during the 2017 season, two lucky fans upgraded to sit in the best seats in the house, courtesy of Pruitt's fine furniture. Those lucky winners will not only enjoy tonight's action in the most comfortable seats directly on the pitch, but those luxury reclining chairs will also be delivered to their home next week as a gift from Phoenix Rising FC and Pruitt's fine furniture. Congratulations to them. Phoenix Rising FC 2, Vancouver Whitecaps FC 2, 1. How about that finish? It, it really took the entire, what ended up being 95 minutes as Drogba shakes hands in uh, good sportsman fashion. He is the hero in tonight's 2-1 win. He is the hero, the goal and the assist, and created lots of opportunities. That first one that Bravo couldn't turn back on frame. It was a fine save, Bravo creating the opportunity with the run across the pitch to open up the shooting lane for Drogba and then Drogba off the crossbar from the cross. And then this is the goal, great body work from Johnson to be strong on the challenge. And there, lovely footwork to set up the cross, floated in beautifully, great leap from Drogba, goalkeeper Melvin stood no chance. Second half and more drug per. Would like that one back, just dragged his foot across the ball. Didn't like the, that one at all, you can tell by the look on his face. The Bandidos couldn't be any happier. Patrice Carteron gets a win in his coaching debut. Drogba and Bravo, excellent in victory. We'll come back and recap this one in just a moment here from Phoenix. Cable TV, reimagined to get you right to the good stuff. La familia Heineken ha dejado un legado especial. Una receta original con solo tres ingredientes y todos naturales. Yo también tengo un don especial. La habilidad de llorar cuando se necesite. Bonita, ¿no? Tres ingredientes naturales. There's more behind the star. Phoenix Rising Football Club ha mostrado puntería. Con los legendarios Didier Drogba y Omar Bravo compartiendo la cancha, los partidos de Phoenix Rising son eventos que no se pueden perder. Ve a Phoenix Rising Football Club contra Swamp Park Rangers, domingo 18 de junio a las 2 p.m. en vivo en Your View, Arizona. Phoenix Rising Football Club. Cada tiro se escucha alrededor. Phoenix Rising FC with a 2-1 win over Vancouver tonight in Didier Drogba's debut. He's with the man of the match down uh, on the field. Here's Jose Bosch. All right. Hey, you guys, we're here with Didier Drogba, man of the match. And Didier, how's it feel? Well, after six or seven months, it's very difficult. <laughs> it's very difficult. Uh, but I'm happy with the performance of the team. And uh, knowing that we've been working with the manager only for three days, 
and uh, it's new, so everybody is a bit uh, in between, and we try to, to do what he says, what he said to us in the in those three days. So uh, it's it's a good result, three points, and it's good to start with three points. From the very beginning, you said you wanted to play, you wanted to contribute. So how's it feel to score a goal and get an assist in a win tonight? No, it's important to be part of the game. You know, you you cannot always score, and a few chances I I, I, I missed. But uh, with the support of the crowd, of, the, of our fans here, you know, the stadium was full today and uh, it's an amazing feeling to play in that stadium and, 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 and win. You see everyone is happy, so that's the most important thing. And what's going through your head after that first goal, crowd's going crazy the way that it is? I'm back at it. <laughs> Thank you very much. Back to you guys. Didier Drogba to the pleasure of over 7,000 inside Phoenix Rising Soccer Complex tonight. He is the hero of this evening's match. A goal, an assist, and a win for Phoenix Rising FC. Not sure it could have gone any better down in the desert. So for Matt Stubbington, for producer Sharni Yerke, and for director Tom Piro and our entire production crew, I'm Brendan Gulick. So long from Phoenix, where the Rising win 2-1 to one in Drogba's debut. It was a storybook beginning and a storybook ending on night one. More to come indeed down in the desert. Have a great night, everybody. Copyrighted telecast of the United Soccer League may not be retransmitted, rebroadcast, or reproduced without the expressed written consent from the United Soccer League. Something. Yeah, no, that was good.